So you want to make a character selection screen for your multiplayer game? Well, you're in luck. That's exactly what we're doing in this video. So just to showcase you what we're making, here you can see that I have my in Unity window here and my standalone build here. These two are right now connected with this one being the server. Now, if I select the nerd over here, you can see I can walk around, everything works just fine. And I can select the cool bean over here and I can start bullying the nerd. So as you can see, everything works just fine. These are individual game objects, so you can do with them what you want. That can be classes, that can be builds, that can be whatever. So let's get into the tutorial. So first of all, I'm not really going to go more in depth about the setup of setting up a player and having every, all of that work in multiplayer because there's already plenty of videos on my channel showing you how to do just that. So we're starting with already having the two characters. Just to show you the setup, you can see that this is a simple networked object with network transform and it's just set up with my own little player controller that i made really quickly and it's the exact same thing for the other one now i could change values on these and that would work just fine but for the purpose of the video i just changed the looks quick interruption here to remind you to like the video and also go and wishlist my game coming to steam called forging ahead the link will be in the top of the description and in the pinned comment below thank you very much a wishlist really means the world to me next thing that you're going to want to do is setting up your canvas so it has what you want. In my case, I just made two buttons, set up the pictures for them and told the player to choose their character. This canvas is in the game scene here, but we're going to modify that a little bit later. So first thing that we're going to do is create an empty game object and you can really call this whatever it is. This is going to be a client representation that we can spawn in the game. This is not the actual player, but this is the client's connection that joins the first time. I'm just going to be calling this one a client. Now this client will actually take the canvas under it and this client will be a network object. And it's as simple as that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to make a prefab out of the client. As you can see, drag and drop it down here. I'm going to delete him from the game scene and have the network manager spawn the client. Now for the actual functionality of the client. So the client is going to be what holds the character selection. So I'm going to make a new script that's going to be called character selection. You can call it whatever you like. Now, as soon as this script is made, we're going to add it to our client and open it up in our script editor. Now here in the script editor, we're going to be needing a few things. First of all, this has to be a network behavior script. This also means that we're going to be using fishnet.object. Now first of all, since we have the canvas on the object, the first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to go into our on start client, which means as soon as our client connects, we're actually going to disable the canvas object. So I'm just going to make a new serialized field here. This is just to be able to keep it private, to keep it data. That's a game object and that's going to be the canvas object. And right down here, we're going to say that if we are not the owner, we're going to disable the canvas object. And that's basically that. Now, the next thing that we're going to want to do is I'm going to make a custom function for each character that we want to spawn. It's important that this is a public function since our buttons need to call it. So we're going to make a public void spawn nerd. And we're also going to make a public void spawn cool bean. Now, in order to be able to spawn them, we need a list over all our beans. So let's make another serialized field and make a private list of game objects that is our beans or whatever this can be your characters your players whatever you want to call it and last thing is we also actually want to be able to reference the object that is the character selector panel just to show you exactly what i'm talking about if we go out to the client here you can see under the canvas i have just an empty game object that's a character selector panel, which means I can just disable this and the UI will disappear. This is because I don't actually want to disable the whole client. I could also disable the canvas, but we might want other things under the canvas later. So I'm just disabling this character selector. So now we're going to make a reference for that, which is also going to be a game object. And this is going to be called the character selector panel. Now, as soon as we try and spawn anything, we want to also disable this panel. This is simply because we don't want them to spawn two things. So that's the first thing that we're going to do. And the next one is where the networking part begins. So we want a server RPC. And this is exactly why that we're going to be using the setup of this empty client object. That's because in order to call RPCs, we need to first be owner of a network object. And so that's what we're doing. And that's what this needs, basically. So I'm making a server RPC with require ownership equals to false. This could technically... The, the required ownership equals to false doesn't really matter in this case. I just always do it in order to avoid some confusion unless I want otherwise. So I'm just going to make a, a new method called it spawn. And what we want in here basically is we want to know what character that we're looking to spawn. And we need to know who's trying to spawn it. So I'm going to look for an integer called spawn index. 
and a network connection that I'm just gonna call con. And now it's really as easy as making a new game object and spawning that how you normally would in this case. I'm just gonna make a new game object, call it player, and then say instantiate beans at the spawn index position. And now at this point, we need some kind of spawn point and a rotation. So for now, I'm just gonna write vector3.0 and quaternion.identity, like so. And then we're gonna spawn it on the server by simply writing spawn, and we're spawning the player, and we're giving the ownership to the connection. And now in the spawn nerd, let's say that we want the nerd to be on the spawn index of zero. We're simply gonna write spawn, zero, and then local connection. And we're doing the same down here, but instead of zero, we're gonna say one. In the index so now let's move on to getting the actual spawn point and that's really the last thing that we need to keep track of the spawn point i simply have a spawn point script right here and i'm just going to make a new script and i'm going to call spawn point this could be spawn points if you want to keep track of multiple but right now i'm just going to need one so this isn't really much networking required here i'm just going to need a simple singleton pattern to be able to actually grab it if you're not familiar with the singleton pattern it's pretty simple if we write public static and then the class name which in this case is spawn point and we just call this whatever we want i'm going to call it instance and then in the awake function i'm going to say instance equals to this this means that by writing spawn point dot instance i will always grab this class right here or this active class instantiated class in the scene so in the spawn point here we can just always easily grab the spawn point now so let's go back to our script the character selection and instead of vector 3.0 here i'm going to write spawn point dot instance dot transform dot position and that's now the spawn position now keep in mind that this way we can only ever have one when you use a singleton pattern using a static instance you can always at max have one in the scene and now let's go populate everything on our client so we need the character selector panel which is right here we need the entire canvas object and we need to input the beans or the characters that we have so i'm going to input the nerd in zero because that was that's what we said and the cool bean on one and now the last thing is we need to set up our buttons so the nerd button i'm going to drag the client down here grab the script that's called character selection and i'm going to call spawn nerd and i'm going to do the same thing for the cool bean version and there we go now let's just test it in single player first and as you can see, I spawned with the cool bean and everything just works perfectly fine. Now let me try and build it and test it. And now here we are, both of them are connected. So let me choose the cool bean over here on the, actually let's start with the client. I'm gonna pick the nerd over here. You can see I can walk around perfectly fine. And if we go over here, I can pick the cool bean and you can see that just works too. So this is really, really simplified version of making a character selector. This was requested in, I believe, either the YouTube comments or the Discord. So feel free to join the Discord, that will be in the description below. And also please do go and wishlist by game forging ahead coming to Steam. That would mean the absolute world to me. And I just hope that you have a wonderful day.